Okay, so in this video we're going to look at how to do pattern matching and I'm going to look specifically at how to pattern match across two half hexagons but the technique itself can, can definitely be upscaled to go across, you know, if you wanted to go across the whole hexagon with the two half hexagons or even the entire block. Um, so yeah, let's have a look. Okay, so we've got the fabric that we're going to pattern match, got an acrylic template paper pieces. I'm also going to use um, pins, clips, basting thread. Um, you can spray starch your fabric if you want to. Basically you want to make your fabric um, as crisp as possible because that can really help when pattern matching. Um, so definitely make sure it's ironed and then spray starch is completely optional. It might just help it to lie flatter but that's up to you. Um, I'm also going to show you how to use this washi tape. I'm doing it. So if we are to look at pattern matching across two of the half hexagons, have a look at the fabric you've got in front of you. If you're going across two, I'd recommend laying your template on. And as you can see on this one, I'd kind of lose the edges of it at the top and bottom. And that's absolutely fine if that's what you want to go for. Um, what I want to do is match across the entire thing. So make sure you've definitely got enough space there. So make sure your fabric's out, place your acrylic template on top and kind of work out roughly where you're going to put it. So I know that I, that's where I want to go. I'm then just going to pick the fabric up and just make sure I've got it in place again. And I'm going to line up the edge of the template and it's almost going in these kind of creases with the flower here. And, and those are just little things that can help me kind of note the markings when I'm matching it across. Again, I would say be generous with your seam allowance on this one. So if you've got a 3 8 acrylic template, I would probably go slightly bigger as you cut around just because um, you kind of want that little bit of wiggle room and you can always trim the fabric down afterwards. So cut this out. And then and in the same way we based it with the identifiable motifs, I've placed the acrylic template onto the wrong side of the fabric and just make sure kind of it is where you want it to be. And I'm going to let the fabric drop, slide the paper template in, make sure you're lining it up here in the, in the lines of your acrylic. And again, you should be able to see, so I can see it's just where I want it on that indent of the flower. So I'm going to use a clip here. Actually, I'm going to use more clips than I probably need to because precision is kind of what you want when doing the pattern matching. And so before I start basting, I'm just going to clip it all into place. And then I'm just going to fold it, because this is the edge where I'm going to pattern match. I'm just going to fold it over just to kind of check roughly where my placement is. And once I've folded it over, I'm going to clip it into place. So I know that is exactly in the place that I want it to be. And in the same way we basted in the other video, we're just going to baste it into place and I've tied a couple of knots in at the end and I'm going to baste it like we did in that first video but I'm probably going to add more basting stitches in than I did in that first video and that's because I really really want to hold it as into place as I possibly can so go down and come back up and the bit where I'll add the more more stitches to it is on this edge where I want to match so just keep checking so I've moved it ever so slightly there so I'm just going to push that back in again because I know I wanted it to be on that crease. I'm just getting it and then I'll take the needle down through the corner in exactly the same way I did before. Come back up and I'm going to do another stitch now on this edge as well. Normally I would go straight to that corner but I'm going to do another stitch here because I really want this bit to be as crisp and as flat as possible because that's where I'm going to pass and match. And then just keep working your way around as we did in the first video. And then tie a knot in it, just as we did in the other video. So tie it once, twice, try not to drop the needle like I did. And then snip your thread. So that is your first half hexagon. And now comes the pattern matching bit. And I know I keep saying it's about precision, but I also, it's a really tricky technique, really tricky. And it's one that 
does cause me stress so I think just once it's in a whole quilt it really really won't notice so don't worry too much about the fine details and I'm setting that for my my benefit as well so find the other motif that you want to match it with so this is the flower that I did and you're going to lay it on top until you've found the right angle to be able to match it at so like that that's going to be where I want it to go so in the same way that I did before I'm going to hold that on there just make sure I've got it really in the right place there which now I think I might have knocked that one off and that's what I mean about you know it really does take practice and getting used to I'm going to go for that one so then place your acrylic on and you know this is where you want it to match slide that other shape out and as you see the fabric moves like this I'm just going to move my acrylic back and now I'm going to line my template up on top just to just to double check that I've got the placement right that'll do and again I'm going to so I lost it slightly then as I pick it up so I'm going to put it back here and hold it and it is this constant kind of checking and rechecking and going back and forth and that's that's what makes it and that's what helps you to make sure that you're getting it in the right place so once you're happy that you've got it kind of roughly where you want it to be and again this is why I always say that having that extra seam allowance just gives you the bit of wiggle room when you're basting so in exactly the same way that I did before I'm just going to cut in to the fabric now and I've given myself a little bit of extra seam allowance to give me that wiggle room when it comes to matching it and I'm not being too precise here about the cutting so once it's cut out, I'm now going to, again, I'm going to lay the template back on. Bear with me, because I know this does sound really repetitive. So, once you've got it in the position you're happy with, so, for me, it'll be there. What I'm going to do is stick a couple of pins in here. So, I know I want it to meet at this corner. So I'm going to stick a pin in here, and because it's on a flat surface, you can kind of just about, she says as she moves the template. And if you do move, that's fine. That's why kind of doing the different basting does allow you to kind of do this back and forth and wiggle room. Right there. So lay it on, use your pin, and kind of, you're just going to push it into those corners. So I want it to go there. So these are the two corners where I really want the template to match. I'm going to take that one off. I'm just going to push the pins in a little bit so they don't kind of fall out as I'm basting. So I can kind of see these are the two corners where I really want it to line up. And again, before I even start basting, I'm just going to place the template on the back. And I've lined it up in between, if you can see it, in between these pins here and here. Because these are the points where I really want it to line up. And as before, I'm going to put lots of clips on to hold it in place. And I'm just going to focus, I'm going to use a clip here. So, so where that pin is, I'm now going to use a clip just there. And I'm just going to focus on this corner here, this pin, this corner. And so I'm not taking the pin out. I'm leaving it in place because I know that's where the corner is. And I'm just going to base that into place there. And you can kind of see that pin should now be right on the corner, which is where I want it to match. And I'm going to put my clip there to hold it into place. So now we're going to do this corner. So I've taken the clip off exactly where that pin is. I'm now going to use my nail to bend that over. And again, you can really see that I've kept the pin in place there. And then you can take it out and use a clip at the top. And then... This is when you can line it up to check whether it's still in the right place. And so then before we base anything, you just lay them next to each other just to check that you've kind of got it right. And if you haven't, that's absolutely fine. Just take your clips off 
and go back to the start of this so lay the fabric out flat place this on top and put the pins in where you want it to go because i've just checked and this is where i want it to be i'm now going to go ahead and baste it in the same way i did the other one but i'm going to really really concentrate on these edges here because this is where i want it to match so i'm going to go down on this corner and come back up and i'm really focusing on holding this line as crisp and as flat as possible because these are the edges where I'm going to match it up. I'm going to put quite a few stitches on this edge, just hold it all in place. And then just before I finish basting the rest of it, I'm just going to check one more time that it's in the right position to safely baste in the whole thing. Yeah, that's good to go. So then just keep going around and baste it the same way we did with the other one. Okay, and if you went slightly larger on your seam allowance, now would be when you kind of trim it down. And I'm just going to trim it a little bit because I want to make it slightly easier when I'm doing it. So if you are going to scissor trim it down, then um, just make sure you don't snip through your basting thread and just get rid of some of the excess here okay so now we're going to look at how you stitch these together um when i do pattern matching i, I like to use a stitch called flat back stitching um so whereas in the other videos we've done whip stitching this is slightly different um so i'm going to do it in a yellow thread so that hopefully the stitches will show up so you can see it as my contrast in um, I'm also going to use a bit of washi tape and this is low tack washi tape because um, I kind of don't want it to leave a residue or anything like that so I'm just going to tear a little bit off and this is kind of roughly the same length as this I'm going to lie these two templates next to each other and make sure the pattern matching is where you want it to be and then I'm going to use the tape to hold it into place here on the top and this is why it's low tack because it's tacky enough that it will hold it in place but not so tacky it'll leave a residue on there and if you turn it over essentially if you're pattern matching on the front it should pattern match on the back so i'm going to use a clip as well to hold it into place here and then i'm going to go to use this thread so um it's just a gutman thread polyester because i find it stronger for how i stitch and I'm using a milliner's um, size 11 because I, I like the, the long thin needles for using. So we're starting on the back. Remember before when we did it, we folded our templates and sewed that way, stitched that way. Just make sure I haven't moved that there. Um, if you're doing that with pattern matching, it almost takes away a tiny bit of the fabric. I'm not really sure why, I just know that's how it, how it happens. So you're going to stitch these lying flat next to each other. So I'm going to start again, as we did before, I'm going to start about a quarter of an inch in. And I'm going to go across the back. And I'm kind of skimming just through. See if I can get this into focus. So I'm kind of skimming just through the top layer of the fabric. I'm not going through the template. I'm not going through to the other side. And then I'm just going to my knot is stopping it from going all the way through and then just going to take another securing stitch exactly the same way when we stitch it together using whip stitch so there i've now secured it at this point so i'm going to bring my thread through to here and also you can see that i've bent the tail was like that because that's how we make sure they nest on top of each other what i've done is just bend it out the way slightly and that just makes it clearer for you to see as you're stitching. So I'm now going to bring my needle to this point here, the very edge, and I'm going to take it through the two edges of the fabric. Just make sure it's in focus still for you. And go through the two edges of the fabric, trying to keep the papers as flat as I possibly can. And then take another securing stitch here. And make sure you're going through um, kind of A fibre from this side and a fiber from this side and you're just going to keep kind of skimming across with your needle like this so this is why it's called flat back because you're going 
flat across the back of your pieces. I think I've just made up that that's why it's called that. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know historically if that's why it's called that. I'm just presuming it's called flat back stitching because you're stitching it as it's flat and stitching it from the back. But it's quite similar to the whip stitch in that you're kind of going over and across and then just make sure, like I did here, your thread doesn't catch. And you can kind of see here as well that your pattern is matching up at the key points that you want to. If it's matching up at the back, then pretty good guess it's going to be matching up at the front. And then the same way that I did before, kind of roughly, maybe every sixteenth of an inch or every twelfth of an inch. But I really wouldn't worry too much about being that formulaic or that precise about it. You kind of just want enough that it's going to hold the fabrics together. So keep going across. And you'll be able to feel whether you're going through the template or so like I can feel it so then I'll come back out and try again. And then when you get close to where the clip is I'm just gonna do one more stitch here. I'm just making sure because I keep catching it. The paper template. There. So once you get as close as you can to the clip I'm just going to take the clip off and you keep sewing all the way up to the end. And then do that um, anchor stitch that we did at the start so you'll go through for a second time right so I've got to this point so I'm going to go through joining these two edges I'm going to go through once go through a second time and I'm just going to put my needle through that loop before I pull it all the way through I'm going to go it through once twice that's going to create a little knot there and then just going to travel it back that quarter inch again and go through exactly as way we just did go through once twice and then that loop of thread that's there you're going to pass your needle through once twice pull and you should be able to feel that there's a knot there then just cut your thread turn it over take your tape off and your pattern match shapes are done so that's just one way you can do it across two templates but again if you wanted to keep going with that same method you would then take um, your fabric and find the next flower where you're matching it up with so it might go there well, actually it wouldn't do because I'm obviously missing a bit here but say roughly there place your template on cut it out and then go back to using your pins and it's exactly the same thing so I would just take it one half hexagon at a time going all the way around. So my previous video looked at tracing paper and drawing the design onto there and bringing it across to the fabric. This one's much more kind of the slow iterative process of taking it one half hexagon at a time and just gradually using the pins, using the clips and making it work for you. And then once you've stitched it together, so I did it as two pairs of the two pattern matching but you could do it across the entire outer circle or across um, two of the half hexagons and your centre hexagon or maybe just this three strip across the middle. Um, so have a play with the technique, see what you create, see which steps you like, which you don't, mix and match and I can't wait to see what you make.